I'm getting the people hired. I'm putting it in place. I'm getting the clock set up. I'm, I'm uh, contacting our radio affiliates and saying, hey, by the middle of July, David Knight will host a three-hour radio show leading up to 11 a.m. Central. So from 8, 9, 10, 11, from 8 in the morning until 11, you will have David Knight. I don't know the name of the show yet. Uh, we've got the clock. We've got the intros getting ready. That's going to happen. Then Mike Cernovich is going to come on at 3 o'clock Central uh, and will at least host an hour of it, but it'll be a roundtable so that it will then uh, segue into others because a lot of our main anchors are so busy they can't do three, four hours a day. So it'll be kind of a lot of these going to be roundtable shows. Knight can hold three hours a day. So can Cernovich easily, but they only want to host an hour or two a day. Same thing with Roger Stone. He'll be coming on at 9 at night till midnight Central. He'll host an hour and a half or so, but then he'll be with Owen Schroyer, who will then segue into clips and other guests. So these are going to be shows hosted by two people that then have generally, at least for an hour, a gallery of other guests, your calls, clips, but mainly it's so we're live on air with breaking news as it happens. And I intend by the end of 2017, I can't believe we're saying that, in the year 2017, the second American revolution went into high gear as patriots using information warfare techniques and the weapon of truth took on the globalists and began to win. This is a chronicle of the 21st century war to restore the new renaissance in the American century. That's what's happening. But I'm, I'm involved in all of it, obviously. The branding, which is the truth. People say, how do I brand stuff? What is the truth of history? And then that's what we brand. Uh, I'm not coming up with any of this. I'm actually looking at what's happened to humans before and bringing it back with a 21st century mix. So this is a big deal. The globalists are going to launch counter-defensives. They're going to get violent. Michael Moore is calling for uprisings. But people know the MSM's out to get them. They know they're liars. They know they work for foreign powers. They know they want to make you poor. In fact, uh, we've had a lot of great folks sending in graphics. One of them is CNN is a terrorist organization. That's Mike Cernovich's idea a month ago. Now we've seen dozens of people peacefully take over national TV and expose it. We're going to tweet that out in the next hour. They terrorize our freedom. CNN is fake news. It only paid out like 15 grand of the 200,000. So CNN is terrorist. CNN is fake news. But they've had all these people throwing fits and freaking out and getting upset and CNN saying it's dangerous. Stop saying it. You're saying kill people. You're having guests on saying the guy that shot the cops and the, and the congressman wasn't an evil person. You're the one saying hashtag hunt Republicans. All we're doing is saying you're a bunch of trash. Just like Trump. Says Mika's begged to come meet with me. So is this other guy. Give me a break. She shows up all bleeding from, you know, facelifts. Get out of my way. They go, oh, we're scared. Kathy Griffin. Kill the president. He says, you know, that's despicable what you did. Ah, you were mean to me. And actually fake cries like a three-year-old who gets caught, you know, d d doing something bad, and they do that fake cry. Mike Cernovich taking over, my friend. Uh, wow, what is it like for you to see the further implosion of CNN, the rest of the media rallying around to try to prop it up, the total hysteria, the ghost dance they've gone into? What do you make of this? Well, I wanted to break a story real quick. I wasn't able to break it when you had me on a Monday because I have to embargo a lot of this stuff. So... There was a um, a big story right now. We found out about Rex Tillerson, Brian Hook, and Margaret Petterline. Uh, Rex Tillerson, uh, some of us might remember, the uh, State Department secretly lifted the ban on refugees. There was a New York Times article about this about a month ago. That's so right, countermanding here. Trump. Not just courts rebelling, what the Supreme Court slapped down on Monday, but we're talking about beyond that. We're talking about rebellion inside the State Department. Go ahead. Right. So I found out that the State Department had lifted the ban on refugees. They were going to let in at least 50,000. And we thought it was Brian Hook. So what a lot of people don't realize, there's this guy, Brian Hook, who shouldn't be a very high level person. He is actually meeting with foreign dignitaries. He is holding court. And you can tell this is like an open secret. And now. Tell folks it's, his pedigree. It's, it's globalist. And he was a never Trumper. So he was a never Trumper, a story broken by Alex Pfeiffer and John uh, Huddleston, I think, of foreign policy back when it happened. So this never Trumper, Brian Hook, got hired in the State Department, and he is meeting with foreign dignitaries. That is an open secret right now. It's the talk of D.C., talk of the town. 
You're not going to find that political, though, because they're happy that a never Trumper is meeting with foreign dignitaries. He's acting like he is so now. So you began to expose that. Now, what are your sources saying? So uh, apparently there was some pushback from uh, Stephen Miller about this refugee lifting. So they um, and I, I texted Nico the article, too, about how they secretly lifted the ban on refugees behind Trump's back. Well, Brian Hook had done that. And it turns out now Rex Tillerson is on board with Brian Hook's plan. Tillerson now wants to let in 100,000 new refugees in a year. All right, so we, this is huge. We've given him benefit of the doubt. You're saying from your White House sources, Rex Tillerson hasn't been blindsided. Rex Tillerson is involved in bringing in Islamists. That brings me to the OECD that set up the current takeover of Europe. They're saying just get, rid, get used to it. We need these Muslims to basically pay European Social Security. So they've decided to repopulate us, not with Latin Americans, Africans, or Asians, which would be fine, but with radical Muslims. That makes no sense, but that's what they're announcing. Go ahead. Yeah, so initially, I thought it was Brian um, Hook who lifted the ban, and indeed it was Brian Hook, but I found out there was a meeting in the Oval Office. President Trump was uh, present there. Stephen Miller was. Tillerson was there. Rex Tillerson went on a rampage and said, I'm not going to listen to some 31-year-old Stephen Miller. Why do you think you, need, you know so much? We need to start taking in more refugees or there'll be more terrorism in America. But you bring in Islamicists, and that's what causes the attack. So, wow. So you're talking to folks that were in the meeting, and Tillerson sounds like he's a Soros operative. So Tillerson, we don't know what happened with him. He started off actually being okay, and we thought it was Margaret Petterling and Brian Hook, who they essentially are running. That actually should be a much bigger story than it is. Brian Hook, never Trumper, totally unqualified for the job is acting as a de facto Secretary of State. He's having meetings with foreign dignitaries, having meetings with heads of state. We're talking, you know, countries like India. They have to go and kiss the ring of Brian Hook, who was a never-Trumper. And I thought, you know, what's going on? Because we thought Tillerson was okay. Well, it turns out, though, Tillerson has now been persuaded by, I don't know, McMaster or whoever, that if we don't let in 100,000 of uh, Muslim refugees a year, then that's going to radicalize Muslims to commit terrorism. So now Tillerson has a massive plan to double the number of refugees being let in. Essentially, by the going way, back by to the way, if, 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 if that sounds like it doesn't make sense, Ergun played the part of the nice Muslim like Turkey did, even though it was the former head of the Ottoman Empire. They got Europe to take in, in the last decade, 5 million Turks, okay, at least. And so now he wants to come in and direct them politically. He's threatened a jihad to, quote, burn down every city through his ambassador uh, to the EU if they don't accept it. Germany finally stood up and said, okay, you can't come here and give a speech. That was today. So this is the model. The Muslim groups say, if you don't let us on the New York Federal Reserve Board, if you don't let us get all these government contracts, if you don't let us come in and do all this, if you don't let in a certain number, we're going to attack you now, which is just what my Pentagon sources told me years ago. And I said, we're being held hostage by rich Muslims threatening to activate terror cells if we don't let more in. So then we're going to let even more in where it's well over these boats 90% male. They keep saying it's 80% in the UN's numbers. That's crazy. Hey, go ahead and blow stuff up. We're not going to be held hostage. We're certainly going to take more of you in. This is the most d idiotic equation. The truth is, our elites are being paid off by Saudi Arabia and the Islamicists. Uh, what else are your White House sources saying? Well, Tillerson now is a full-on globalist. Again, I don't know if he was bribed by somebody or somebody threatened his family or what happened, but because he did fight globalism back in the 90s and 2000s. Yeah, so so they're back in. And th so there's a nasty fight, nasty infighting. Tillerson is, again, he wants to go back to the Obama administration era of the refugee resettlement policy. That's the Tillerson th thing. Brian Hook. Let me ask you this. Why does the OECD, which, again, is the original big globalist system that took over Europe, why is it and the U.N.? obsessed with, quote, repopulating us with Muslims when statistically highest rates of, of, of welfare, super high rates of crime, pimping, sex slavery. I mean, I mean, if you want to statistically bring in people, Mexicans are like 50 times better. I mean, let's just let's admit it. An average Mexican worker ends up paying more taxes, doing more work than the average third generation American. I don't want to say Americans are lazy like the leftists say, but statistically living in the lap of luxury makes you lazy. I don't care what color you are. A third-generation Mexicans as lazy as anybody else, as, as white people. But why would we be bringing in, why would we bring in Brazilians or 
even Nigerians or 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 people from Asia? Why wouldn't we bring in Chinese if we're going to bring in Muslims? What is going on here? Yeah, and why not bring in South African farmers who are being slaughtered Pushed in out of South the Africa? Right? There's why 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 didn't we bring in more Ukrainians when you know they were having that problem in the Crimea? It's definitely it's an anti-Christian thing. There there's really no question about it. They don't want to bring in anybody who's Christian. They want to. It's the same reason they want to take out Assad. That's it. They Assad. want to bring in Muslims because they're not Christian. Exactly. It's a war on Christians. Because they don't even. It's, it's not even a color issue. They don't want Christians. You just said it. Yeah, and, and that's what people have to understand. It, once you understand the same thing with the, from the Middle East. Why don't we take? You know, me personally, if we're going to take in refugees or migrants or whatever you want to call them. Well, why don't we take in good Christian fam? Take Syria. Roughly 20% was Christian. If you do the math, it was like 0. .000 something. Out of 3,000 people, they bring in one Christian. Exactly. So that says it all, really. It isn't a color thing, a race thing. It's not a country thing. Because we could bring in intact Christian families from Syria or from Jordan or from Afghanistan or Iraq. Christians need not apply. It is a war on Christianity, and anybody who can't see that is ignoring everything that's right in front of their face. Cernovich, you always boil it down. You really are amazing because that's hiding in plain view. It's an anti-Christian move. Attacks on Christians have quadrupled. Uh, something like 70% of all religious attacks in the world are against Christians. And then our government goes in and puts the most radical, crazy, woman-raping, slaving, sex-slaving, pedophile Al-Qaeda in charge and ISIS... And then we just go along with it. The good news is it caused a rebellion in our military. It caused a rebellion in the Senate. It caused a rebellion in law enforcement. And I think that's why people finally had the decision they had to join the Republic was because you can't just sell out to this like Boss Hogg and, you know, there's some power structure that owns stuff, but you're okay. I mean, I would fight that because I'm a moral guy, but I wouldn't fight to the death. I wouldn't be like 18 hours a day. It's that it's existential. It's Satanist allied with Islam and a bunch of scum wanting to totally enslave everybody. I mean, this is insane. Yeah, I don't get to take days off, man. You know, people. I was doing um all these events in D.C. and people go, man, you look really tired. And I go... Now, I'm not going to lie to you, I am tired because I have to go every day because they're trying to murder us every day. When you have an enemy army trying to murder you every day, you have to get up and you have to fight every day. There's no choice. It's a life or death war. Well, I'm going to have you take over. I skipped this break because I'm cutting into your time. You've got a lot to cover, but I know you always invite me on. Mike, very soon we're going to have your own transmission. But Robert Kiyosaki, best-selling author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, he sold more than like 100 million books last time I checked. Uh, really good friends with Trump, co-offered several books with Trump. Uh, and I know it was really Kawasaki actually said I should get Trump on and then made contacts and Trump came on, not because of Stone, but Kawasaki. Uh, but he was in black ops in Vietnam. He, he flew uh, Cobra gunships, but, but did a lot more behind the scenes. And he has now just in this time of, of reflection, this time of truth coming out, the enemy's intensifying lies, we're intensifying truth. He talked to Millie Weaver and the great producer and camera man, uh, Gavin, and this is an excerpt of what's going to air on the nightly news tonight of where he warns President Trump. And just to make that point, he points out who's really bringing the drugs in. So uh, here's a guy taking a lot of risks to his own life to tell you what he was involved in, Robert Kiyosaki. This is Robert Kiyosaki for Infowars.com. Billy Weaver reporting for InfoWars.com. We're here in Bozeman, Montana at the Red Pill Expo with a very special person. Now, he was one of the speakers. This is Robert Kiyosaki. Right. So you said you know President Trump, and it seems like you knew him pretty well. What can you tell us about him? Well, first of all, he and I wrote two books together. I'm the only other person that shared the cover, and we we're supposed to write the third book, except... I said, hey, it's time to write the third book. He goes, I'm sorry, I'm running for office. I said, good luck. <laughs> so I feel for my friend Donald. He's a great man. He has the same disease I have, foot and mouth. <laughs> <laughs> or tweet and mouth, you know, whatever you want to call it. Tweet and mouth. Everybody said, well, stop tweeting. So, well, it's Donald. And people look at his, what, et tu kufufu or something he wrote, he tweeted. At the same time, he went to NATO, and he said to NATO, pay up. You guys are not paying your bills. Then he went to Saudi Arabia and says, let's kick ISIS's butt. You know, that's the kind of leader he is. But the press never covers that. And we're after Trump for firing the FBI director. And we all know the FBI 
is a little tainted also. The CIA, I mean, I know a little bit about the CIA because as a Marine pilot, I was recruited by them to fly trucks. And I don't do trucks, I'm pretty straight. Yeah. You know? So anyway, our whole system is suspect right now. It's all these bureaucrats and people with their hands in the pot. And the question I ask all over the world, it's all over the world, why does a politician go into office poor and leave rich? How does that happen? That's corruption. But nobody says anything about that. They get Trump for some goofy thing, you know? And the trouble with the special prosecutor, because I know, because I've had one of them on my butt, <laughs> this is the thing I'm, I'm afraid of, because Trump's my friend. They'll find something. You know, when I, I, I was guilty, I got accused of in the Marine Corps, and they came and they started unturning over the rocks. Oh my God. Because all the things I did, I thought I got away with. I didn't get away with. <laughs> yes, I just pled guilty and just got off. To get off, you know. I, I was never. They let everything go. But my, my, my concern for my friend, the president, is they're going to find something. And it doesn't make a difference what they find. They will find something. Man, we got to get Robert to a shot routinely. I'm not bragging, but he's like reached out to get on, and then it kind of breaks down. He's busy. We're busy. We should have that guy on every week. So Robert Kiyosaki suddenly. 100 million books sold or more. He comes out and says, I ran drugs for the CIA. I mean, that's just the signal that the answer is the leak. The answer is the whistleblower. The answer is the real people that did all this because they believe it was for greater good. He's like, I flew drugs in. You're going to get Trump for claiming some made up crap? No. Go ahead and take over, Mike Cernovich. We love you. Yeah, no. And think about how desperate they are, too, is the freaking, the Daily Beast wrote an article trying to claim that people are that people are trying to say that uh, people are on Mars or whatever. The, the fake news media is just so unbelievably desperate. It, it, it does blow my mind every yeah, by the day. Way, I didn't say that. I had a guest on who said, they, they, it, 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 who said they, they may have you know, tried that. The point was, and I said, no, I don't agree with that, but they're doing animal-human chimeras, and then, they, and then the media makes jokes about that, which is admitted. Yeah, and they just, that's the whole point. It's just an, another, like, big lie. You know, another another scam. What what can we say? But that's how desperate they are, and and that's why I I enjoy when those are because they even mentioned me in the article and they lied about me. And I like that they do that because it shows how desperate they are. It shows the bad guys don't like us. So let me ask you this, because I, I got to ask you before I go. I'm gonna be watching obviously as I work around the office. What do you make of the CNN Veritas stuff? I mean, it just gets the Megyn Kelly and the stuff you did. Now this, it's just doesn't it feel good? to know you're there and that the drudge is there and then folks like uh, Project Veritas. I mean, this is exciting. Yeah, I was getting texts from friends who are actually liberals, and they go, man, you must be having a party with all the CNN blows because the CNN is ISIS thing. The um, Oh, by the way, I got a message from somebody. She had actually said that she received her check and she had a medical procedure. It was going to help pay for that procedure. So... She wanted me to tell you, you know, thank you for that and, and everything about well, that. Well, I cracked the whip yesterday, and it's my fault. I launched these promos and kind of put one guy on it, another guy, and then trying to get to people and pay them, but, but, but we always do it. The guy in England, his check's being sent out today. So, yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, yeah. That's where people, um, they, they say, where's my check? And it's like there's a lot of people who did it, and, and people are getting to it. So, yeah, she received it, was really happy. And, and that's what is a collective, like, body blow. One thing after another. Scaramucci was going to sue CNN it's because like they lied about him. It's like metaphysical. CNN comes out and says, oh, uh, you know, you edit your videos, Veritas, which they don't. And then, and then it comes out that they're the ones editing. Sorry, get back to Scaramucci. Yeah, no, I mean, that's the beauty of it is that they are, they're falling into a trap where they're saying, well, why would anybody trust an edited video? And I'm saying, you're playing into our hands with that. So, so James is actually, O'Keefe was a great, you know, great patriot. He is exposing them, and they're saying, well, you, but you edited videos, and how dare you use edited videos? Exactly our point. So anytime now they do a hit piece on one of us, I have that clip of Anderson Cooper and Van Jones where they go, who would trust an edited video? And I go, I'm, I'm going to save that one locked and loaded. If next time they come after me, I'm just going to say, well, according to Van Jones, you can't trust CNN because the video is edited. They're, as the New York Post says, really hurting right now. But I always have found, even if the bad guy starts the fight, I get him down. It's once I actually knocked him on his ass, I got to get ready for the real fight. And I think, though, you know, we knocked him down hard. 
but we got to get ready to really put them down permanent. Well, and we'll never put them down permanently. I mean, that's where people go wrong is in life. They're really, there's never, no, I know never the enemy over. keeps coming back, but I mean, we need, that's what I mean. We need to break their back. Oh, we have to keep pushing our advantage. We can't give them any mercy. We have to keep, 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 keep catching them slipping, keep hitting them hard. We got, but the, the good thing now is there's a, um, you know, Malcolm Glad wrote, wrote a great book about the tipping point and we've reached a tipping point now due to influencers and network nodes and everything. The idea is how does a pandemic or an epidemic spread? And then you, you have patient zero, right? Well, that's you know, what the CNN want to guy called us was a virus. They understand that we are a virus to their system. Don't they get, they're already done. Well, exactly. That's why I was being careful with the metaphor, because I don't want to say you're a virus, but you were the patient zero. You were the person who began spreading the idea that they, they are fake news and to call them fake news and to call them ISIS. And Brian Stelter in his column even said, Alex Jones is calling us ISIS and this is a terrible thing. And so that's how deep the penetration is. The pandemic has spread now. The epidemic has spread and CNN doesn't know what to do. Mike Cernovich, straight ahead. I'm Alex Jones. Not only news tonight, 7 o'clock. By the way, all of you are the virus of returning life. On the march.